What's up, everybody? We back. Another R2C2 quarantined edition. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. Hey, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the quality of the episodes just keeps getting better, see, because, uh, you know, people can't hide from us right now. You know, yeah, nobody like, <laughs> has nothing to do. We can track everybody down. It's all good. <laughs> exactly. And today we've tracked down uh, a couple of guys who are some of our favorite guests we've ever had on, and they're coming on together now. The Skipper. Aaron Boone, and one of your closest friends in life, Mike Harkey. Thank you both for being on, fellas. Thanks for having us. It's good to be here. Both, it. both, both coasts represented here. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's right. And both right. in deep, deep quarantine. Oh, deep thought quarantine. About, I thought right. about doing mine putting a desk right in the middle of the street because there's no activity <laughs> going on in the middle of the street. I could have done my podcast right from the middle of the street. <laughs> Oh, man. Wait, Hark, where do you live? I'm in California. I'm in Chino Hills. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. See, and and Aaron, C, and I are all in different parts of the tri-state area. Yeah, Aaron, you guys you are all transplants. Yeah, exactly. I got, I'm in the woods in Connecticut. So <laughs> everyone keeps asking me how New York. I'm like, I'm in the woods in Connecticut. I'm not, I'm not sure. That's what everybody keeps saying. Are you good out there? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm across the bridge and I'm not crossing the bridge. So I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. No, just leave it to me in the heart of everything. Yes. All right, guys, I got this. Don't worry. It's like, I, I was telling Aaron earlier, but like I went for a walk on Friday it was in the in the, in the city. It was the first time I had gone outside in over two weeks. The weirdest experience I've ever had in my life. Like, you, the, I think the craziest thing was like hearing cars streets away, like as if you're like in the country and just hearing a car on the highway rolling by. You know, like yeah. you you normally don't get that experience in New York. It's just. It's bizarre, man. It's just so weird. And yeah, I hear everybody's like walking like in the streets. Like there's no cars in the streets. It's just bikes, kids running up and down the street and everybody's just walking around. So we try to keep our social distance, try to go for a walk every night to get out a little bit. But man, it's, it's no cars, no activity on the streets, which is which is I guess it's good because, you know, people are taking this quarantine serious. Mm. Now, for Aaron and, and, and Hark, did you guys know that CC was an incredible germaphobe. Before all of this, he was already a, a hardcore germaphobe. Were you aware? Oh, definitely. I know I was aware. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably uh, made, I made more fun of him than anybody that's ever known him about everything <laughs> because he is so self-conscious about shaking somebody's hands or having somebody get too close to him. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. I had no idea until – he was coming down to spring training this year, and on his Instagram, he had all his bag full of Lysol and cleaning <laughs> products. And this was before it really hit the fan, where it was like, whoa. And I'm like, dude, what? He's like, dude, I'm a germaphobe. I had no idea. <laughs> That's the best thing that could ever happen. Now I don't have to shake nobody's hands. Just all elbow <laughs> From here on out, for the rest of my life, I'm just going to start hitting people like that. Oh, Pretty soon, sure it ain't even, it's not even going to be that. It's going to be the old black head nod. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be it. Moving. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys think, like, in all seriousness, though, like, is is the handshake going to be dead now at the end of the, like, uh, no matter, is the handshake out? Is it out for good after this? Uh, I think for that's... people that you don't know, like, I mean, yeah. I think if, like, in the clubhouse, everybody's still going to shake hands and do everything, you, you know, all that stuff. But I think for people, like, just random people walking up to you in the street, I know it's there for me forever. <laughs> like, it's over. I'm good. I, rem I remember the last the last day of that we played in spring training, you know, a couple of days before people were starting to like not sign stuff or interact yeah. with, with people. And that last day, I remember going, how many, I, I think I need to start doing this. And, <laughs> and so I did. And, and a couple of fans were like, Hey man, shake. I'm like, come on, man. I, NBA just canceled last yeah. night. I don't think we're supposed to be doing this. And, uh, man, it's, it's been crazy. And I, it probably will change. Yeah. It's changed over the years already with the way people, you know, whether it's the bro hug, whether it's high five, knuckles, whatever it is, it's it's evolved a little anyway. And this may just take it, take it all out. Take the handshake out. It, 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 that it really day that I was down in spring training, we had the the uh, coronavirus meeting that morning, that first day. And then I go right out to the field and somebody was like, can you sign this thing? And I'm like, damn, like, what do I do right now? Like, I just watched this whole thing. I'm freaking out, literally. Like, my skin's crawling. 
and then I got to go out and sign, and I signed for like 15 minutes. Like, uh, yeah. it, was, it was funny for me because they asked me, and I looked at them, I said, come on, man. Seriously? They said, oh, my bad. <laughs> like, come on. And it was funny because Nevin was walking through the clubhouse, and who was the, uh, the, uh, the beat writer, the gal? The, the young girl, Lindsay Adler. Oh, Lindsay. Lindsay. Yeah, yeah. Lindsay. Lindsay. So he 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 reached out and he he shook her hand, and then he as he was walking away, he happened to turn around and she took out a Clorox wipe and started wiping his hand. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, "Oh, Lindsay, is that where we are right now?" And she says, "That's definitely where we are right now." <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I know he I, got offended by that. That's oh, he that's got hilarious. he got so he got so pissed. I'll tell you a funny story along those lines. So. That that Wednesday, March 11th, final NBA game, now three weeks ago uh, from when we were recording this, I was on the air calling the Mavericks-Nuggets game yeah. with Doris Burke, you know, then that would turn out to be the final game. And Doris is famously, like, it, it, one of her amazing qualities is how engaged she is with you during the broadcast, right? And she'll, like, be tapping you all during the broadcast, right? And she's tapping you, tapping you. And earlier in the day, she had said... Like, she had a really bad headache and stuff. And I knew it wasn't a symptom of corona at the time, at least that we had thought of. But I was like, oh, I got to be a little extra careful. So during the broadcast, she's tapping my hand over and over again, like tapping my hand just as she's talking animatedly, right? And I then am pulling out this hand sanitizer spray I have, <laughs> and I'm squirting it on my hand under the broadcast table every time she taps my hand. Just like I don't want her to see because I don't want to offend her. But at the same time, like I got to spray this. Well, as it turns out, she actually had Corona yeah. that, that oh, night. Man. Like she, yeah, she Rudy day. Goldberg too. Yeah, yep. right. Is it right? I was like, I, you know, it, I was like doing it just to be extra precaution, you know, extra cautious. But as it turned out. I don't know, you know, like it might have actually kept me from getting it. I don't know. It's kind of wild, you know. <laughs> may have. It may. It really may have. By the way, you we can have never to, be too. You can never be too cautious with this well, thing, bro. Like it, it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. You're you're better off being safe than sorry, obviously. And and see between your you know your germaphobe nature and how you actually whether people realize this or not are a true introvert. This is like your time, man. This is your time I, I, to shine. I am living my best life right now. Like, <laughs> my wife can't get mad. I can watch every show and I can sit on the couch and it's no problem. <laughs> this is literally the best thing. Yeah. Nobody's asking me to go to dinner. No. I don't have to make fake fault. I don't have to make up stories why I can't go to the city. <laughs> like, this is the best. It's literally the best thing. Ever. We can quarantine uh, for the rest of the year. I'll be good, bro. <laughs> yeah, but I still caught you passing out food. With a mask on, you look like dang, Jay, you look like Mike Myers from Halloween with all this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all this stuff I went today too. We we did the same thing today, which is we went uh, we doing the five boroughs feed the uh, feed the five boroughs initiatives with all the presidents of the boroughs uh, with Fresh Direct and pitch in and and we went we were there today again this Wednesday. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you got to get out there and help the people. But I'm definitely covered up. You know, I got that's, everything that's covered. Nice. I had glasses that's on nice. today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, cool you had the one doctor that says doing, now it's 27 feet, didn't he? Uh, I I saw that, but I was like, eh, I can't I can't of, account for 27 yeah. feet. You know? <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a hell of a sneeze right there. <laughs> I was like, I just have to assume that's not true because <laughs> it's, like a first down, it's almost a first down. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. You know, it was weird. I actually saw when I went for that one walk in New York. I saw two different weird like instances of people uh, interacting who were clearly like friends. One, there was one guy on one side of the sidewalk and the other guy on the other side of the street on the sidewalk. They're having a conversation for at least 20 minutes because they were there when I like started my walk and there when I got back. And that was just their way of hanging. And then another, I saw a car riding alongside a guy like it was like the dude driving and the guy walking and they were like going for a ride together talking but we're like 10 feet apart or whatever it's just oh it's a weird time it is so i i guess we we first have to do this i i give a big thumbs up to harky's beard man that is a beautiful beard mike i love oh, it well don't get used to it, because I hate it. <laughs> I ain't never seen you with a beard. I ain't never seen you grow your beard out like that. <laughs> Me neither. My kids, my grandkids, they don't know what to do. They're, they're still trying to figure this out. But I I started it when I, as soon as I got home. 
My face itches like crazy. I got all kind of bumps all up under here. I'm afraid. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm actually afraid to shave. <laughs> Go have a Nestle Crunch bar up under here. Oh and shave it. man! Oh man! It's gonna look terrible. Oh, oh my man. gosh, Aaron! How how much have you been in contact with your players through this period of time? And and you know how, how much of the conversations you have is kind of like checking in mentally versus like maybe giving some workout guidance or, or throwing program stuff. I mean, where are you at with that? So I try and kind of touch base with, I mean, right now it's, it's just, how you doing? You know, how's the family? Where are you hanging? Um, I know Matt and Hark with all the pitchers are trying to, you know, keep all their workouts and everything they're doing every day and, and logging it. Um, so they're on top of that stuff. Um, I've, Cole Garrett lives out here, so I've, I've actually gone and played catch with him a couple times. Bro- about broke my hand the other day, um, <laughs> but but mostly just text messages. Uh, I Facetime a couple of guys. Uh, that's been interesting. <laughs> Facetime <laughs> Boyd from Missouri with his shirt off and hat backward. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's. But just trying to check in, you know, but give guys their space too, you know. I mean, obviously this is, you know, a, a, a difficult time and just trying to check in and make sure everyone's just mentally doing well as as a family. Mm. Uh, Hark, how about for you when you're, when you're checking in with you, your guys in the bullpen? Like, are you giving them any kind of like specifics for – Hey, make sure you're doing this, or is it just like touching base? Like, hey, are you throwing a couple times a week? How specific do you get when you're checking in with the pitchers? Well, we we tried. I mean, two weeks ago, when myself, Matt, and we talked, you know, and we gave ideas on what we thought we wanted to keep these guys at. Yeah, you know, we wanted to make sure the relievers probably threw a couple bullpens a week. Uh, we wanted starters to try to throw a couple bullpens a week with two ups to simulate two innings. Um, but that was also at the time when we probably thought we were coming back quicker, but now the way things are going, there's really no timetable. So, you know, we had a lot of guys like Tommy Canley who kind of just took a week off after he left and just started throwing again. And I think he's throwing his first bullpen this week. So it becomes kind of almost back to, to zero basically what we're doing because as I was talking to Matt the other day is if, if you're out two months and guys say they were doing this, you're still not going to say, okay, well, he's been doing this. Let's just throw him. He's good for three innings. We're, we're, nobody's going to trust that. We're going to try mm. to be as cautious as we can and kind of just go by what we see after that, but just keeping in contact with them. And um, Matt and, uh, and Zach built them a Google docking so they can, they can document all their workouts and then that way we can see what they're doing. And it, it just, it's just been a tough time. But I think that's why it's going to be a little longer than people think just because you can't just run back out there. You no. know, yeah. the pitchers got to get built back up. You know, it's not like the NBA where you just run back out on the court and <coughs> yeah. start playing games. Like guys got to yeah. get built back up. You know, I've been talking to Monty a lot. He's, He's been freaking out and worried, like, because he was no, he not was locked in. <laughs> but he was locked in, and you know, now all of a sudden he's just got to take a step back. It's kind of like the offseason again with no date. You know what I'm saying? We Baseball players, we so, you know, conditioned to have, like, a date that we that we get back to. And, you know, to not have that is a weird thing right now. Yeah, and, and I think that's why it's important to not only have the conversations and communicate with guys, but – having them with this Google doc, be able to kind of record what they're doing so that when we finally do get back, you know, as best we can, we can map out not only, you know, a program that's going to be successful, but one that's going to be safe and building them up because reality is it'll probably be on a shorter timeline. And, and, but you got to make sure with, with pitchers that they get built up properly and, and you got to err on the side of caution in my mind. And probably the biggest mistake that we'll make is knowing that, you know, say we have 80 games. You you can't afford to go on an extended losing streak at no time. Right. And so every team's going to be thinking, we need to get off to a really, really good start. Well, a lot of times that comes with pushing your best pitchers. So <clears throat> with that being said, you, we have to be very, very sure with where guys are at when we get back. 
Well, that's why I think depth's going to end up being important because if it, if they do do a shorter version of spring training, you would imagine that would mean extended rosters and having some extra guys. So that, you know, say 13th, 14th, 15th, maybe even 16th pitcher on a staff to start the year if they go brief in spring training, that's those guys are going to become key contributors, especially early, because they're going to have to pitch a good amount as you build guys up. For sure. Yeah, it's a great point. It, it's so weird. I mean, look, this is all so weird. It's obviously, <laughs> it, it's it's just it's just strange. It's a strange time for humanity. Do you feel like, I mean, in your conversations, Aaron and, and Hark, do you feel like guys have accepted that, look, this is going to be a totally different iteration of a season than we've ever experienced, and that's okay. Whatever it is, we're going we're gonna to be able to lock in when the time comes because, as we've talked about, guys are creatures of habit. There's not going to be any normal routine for this. We know that. Do you think guys are still able to process kind of the stakes once they're back and, and, and have the same sort of investment with a totally different you know, season than they're used to? I'll bet on our guys all the time, you know, we, we talk all the time about being able to deal with everything that a season can throw at you. This is something obviously no one's ever seen. Um, but I also feel like we're built to handle these kind of things. And it's not going to be ideal. It's going to be unique. But um, the, the expectation is that we, we've got to go perform. And I feel like we have the people that will keep, keep us on the right track and making sure we're, we're, we're putting our best foot forward day in and day out. Yeah, which was weird because when we we when we left, we were in a situation where we didn't know where our starting depth was going to come from. Well, now three months later, we might be deeper than most clubs. <laughs> That's a good point. No, nah, this roster is, is definitely like de- built to deal with adversity. Like anything that's going to come their way, they'll be able to deal with it. And I mean, I know guys are still working real hard and you know, still anticipating that the season's going to start, you know, whenever, you know, in June or whatever. So um, I think guys will be fine and, and be able to handle this thing, you know, no problem and go out and really, I mean, that's like, that's what it is playing for the Yankees though. Like you go yeah. out and it, it, at whatever, however long the season is, if it's fucking 13 games, we're going to win the World Series. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's just, that's just the mentality here all the time. Well, we won 103 games using guys from extended spring last year, so we should be fine. but i i feel like everyone's mindset is good i mean you know obviously even this goes obviously well beyond baseball to where you know when we talk about checking in with guys and their well-being and just how you doing how's your family i feel like by and large i feel like our guys are in a really good frame of mind with kind of handling it dealing with it knowing they gotta you know social distance and kind of hunker down and do what they have to do right now but i feel like when the bell rings, they'll be ready to, you know, transition and build right back up into what the what the goal is. You know, it, it's I feel like in these times, the emphasis on leadership is highlighted more than ever. Right. I mean, a lot of times you think about that in the political spectrum in these times. But really, in, in any sphere, you want to mm-hmm. feel like you're you're cared for, you're comforted, you're led along those lines. Uh, for all of you, because you all have been or are in different positions of leadership and have been throughout your career. See, I'll start with you. Who's someone who you look to and you think like, you know what, this person was a good leader or there was some key trait about this person leadership wise that I really admired and liked? Um, I mean, you mean throughout my career that I've Yeah, played? life, career, anything. Um, G, for sure. Um, you know, just watching him, the way he went about his business. <laughs> Um, you know, it wasn't really like any rah, rah, he didn't have to get in your face, but you knew if you did something wrong, he's going to come talk to you and, you know, try to get you on the right track. And, and, you know, not really like, he never really killed me, but he would always put me in my place if I needed to be, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and, um, I always respected him for that and, and always, you know, felt that presence no matter what. How about you, Hark? Oh, it's always been my dad. It it was like, I always get the, the phone call. It was. It was always the uh, keep it in perspective talk that I always had, and CC can probably attest to that. That's that's how I've kind of kind of lived. I don't I don't get too high, I don't get too low, and if if you need me, I'm there. And and whether it whether it means me to tell you what you don't want to hear, I've always been good with that. How about you, Aaron? For me, someone that comes to mind is Greg Vaughn. Um, wow, interesting. You know he. 
he came over in from San Diego in, in 99 where they went to the World Series. He had 50-something homers, and then he came over with us with the Reds, who were a young team. We had a lot of veterans. We had some veterans, too. Um, <laughs> but he he was really – and he was that vocal leader. You know, he was – but he, he made you feel – important he he kind of he kind of tapped into everyone on the team no matter where they were from or whether they're a rookie whether they're a veteran player he just had a way about him that could really relate to everyone and um he was like i mean we had, went in 96 games that year out of nowhere and i feel like he was in a lot of ways a driving force behind the scene of making us know we could do this Aaron, along those lines, do you in this moment feel like a different gravity as far as being a leader of this team goes? I don't know. No. Um, and, and the reality is, you know, I, like a lot of people right now, are away from it. So yeah. it's, you know, it's it's odd and it's different and it's important that I continue to, you know, but I, I treat it in a lot of ways like like the off season where I, I try and tap in and touch base with guys. I'm having conversations with the front office. Hark and I have some meetings coming up starting here in a few days where we're just trying to make sure we're tight and buttoned up and everything. Um, but I don't feel any extra duty or calling at this time. Um, you know, when we get back and it's go time, we get back into a spring training setting, depending on how long that's going to be. You know, that's going to require something different, and it'll be important that, you know, I help guide that. You know, I I think I I want to transition to some lighter stuff, too, because you guys are great for that. And we also want to distract people a little bit who are dealing with the the incredible, uh, you know, unprecedented nature of these times. But. But just like one more thing on the scheduling front, and, and this will be for all of you. C, maybe we'll have you kick this off. Like, is there an amount of games in your mind, C, that there have to be in order for you to feel like, okay, that's still a regular season? Like, is there any number that you'd be like, like, is it 60? Is it 80? Is it 100? Like, you know. No, to, to me, it is what it is. Like, this is not going to be a normal season, you know. Yeah. Um, so you just got to treat it like a strike season or, you know, one of those seasons in basketball to lock out. Like, it is what it is. Like, you know, however many games we play, whoever is the champion at the end is a champ. You know, so, it, it, it you know, you just got to kind of roll with the punches and go with the flow and, and, you know, however many games you end up playing, that's the season, you know, and, and then you roll on to the next. I don't think there's, you know, there has to be 100 games. It has to be 120 games. Um, nah, I mean, I think it's just getting guys back out there and playing and, you know, letting the fans enjoy and let us enjoy it. Um, and whoever wins at the end is the champion. Yeah, we don't have that luxury. I mean, mm. you know, we don't get to yeah. choose what's the perfect number. And it's not and it's not our job. Like at the end of the day, we're part of this. This is a little bigger than us, too. And as 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 baseball players, as a baseball team, as athletes, you know, like we saw in 9-11, similar but different, you know, we're going to be part of the healing of a country, of a of the world, you know, like we're like how much do all of us that are big sports fan like it's driving me nuts not to be able to watch an NBA game right now or a live oh. baseball game or whatever. Like it's killing me. Yeah. So think how I know how much and I've gotten so many text messages and comments or whatever that you know, we're going to be part of that back to normal in a way. And that that's a responsibility. And we have a duty to go out there and perform no matter what the situation is, no matter what the schedule ends up saying. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you go into the season, no matter whether it's a 20 game season or a hundred game season, it's, it's whether you make those games an excuse on why you can't win the world series is going to be the, biggest issue and this is one thing in my 11 years of being a new york yankee we we always anticipated winning a world series when we go to spring training and i don't see that being any different whether we depending on how many games we play mm. that's our goal so whatever challenges they throw at us at whatever time our goal is to win the world series and if it if we have to go 19 and 3 and then go right into the playoffs, then that's what we're going to have to do. <laughs> you, you, you know what's crazy is that during this time I figured out, I don't need cable or direct TV. Like, <laughs> without live sports, I don't need none of that shit. I just watch Netflix, Hulu, Disney+. Yeah. Plus. Like, I'm paying for all these channels. 
And exactly. I don't watch any of it because it's no yeah. live sports on. Like it's crazy. Let, let the internet go off and you'll be running through the streets naked going oh, crazy. Yeah, if, if the internet go off, it's a wrap. If, if, if I ain't got no Wi-Fi, then I'm, then I'm done. But when I got Wi-Fi, I don't need shit. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it is a isn't it a, it is amazing though when you realize just like how much you tune into sports when you put on cable oh. right because because it's like oh. now it's like wait there's I, well I don't need to go to that channel like <laughs> it, it, it yeah. Aaron say it's killing me man like the other day I watched uh, Jeter's final game on yes they were re-airing it I just like I needed to see baseball like I just like I was jonesing for it. Yeah, yeah, I, I've I've done a lot of that too. Like I'm I'm nostalgic in that way, so I, I like watching a lot of these old games or pulling up stuff on YouTube to to watch. So that's good. But man, especially now living back in the Northeast and in the winter, you know, I watch a lot of NBA now. Yeah, like I'm watching yep. you all. The, like <laughs> I miss that because I get in that routine, man. I follow these games. Yeah, and, oh. and it's just gone. <laughs> now, I'm, now you can. Now I'm you can get. At home, I ain't doing anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you can get. Now you can get coronavirus updates on MLB Network, ESPN, <laughs> ESPN Two. Uh, I mean, you can't it, It's all regular it. news now. Yeah, I haven't yeah. turned none of that on, man. I'm, I'm uh, straight Hulu and straight Netflix and all that shit. That's it. I can't even turn the news on. Well, let me ask you guys this before we get to uh, Hark is going to give our audience exactly what shows they need to be watching because no one knows shows <laughs> no, like Hark. Give you a bunch of fucking no. uh, Chicago. <laughs> First of all, hey, hey. Always, network. Nobody want to watch that shit, man. Network shows are the best. He loves he always has to go to, Yes, yes, it is. NBC, ABC, CBS. You can go through the. <laughs> Fox, you can go through the whole gamut. I will have a show that you should be watching. I did find a good one on ABC though, for life. That that new one, uh you probably Oh yeah, seen yeah. It. It's yeah. real good though. Yeah, so. I watched the first episode about the brother wrongly accused. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. For yeah. life? Yeah. yeah for it comes life. on Tuesday nights on ABC. All right, good. Good. So All let right. me ask you this first. So given that we don't have live sports, if there was one game in sports history that, you know, you could pick to watch a re air of you know, maybe you've already chosen that game and rewatched it. But if there's one game that that you would, you know, you feel comfortable being like, all right, if I could only watch one game throughout the history of sports, this is the one I'd want to watch on loop, or this is the re air I'd want to watch. What would be the game you would pick? The Let's... Raiders against the Redskins Super Bowl when yeah. Marcus Allen made that run, the reverse run. I've probably seen that game 115 times, 150 times, and I was still I would watch it uh, oh. another 150 times because that's the last time we won the Super Bowl. So <laughs> that, that's Los, it. An- the Los Angeles Lakers against the Boston Celtics in Boston when the air conditioner ran out and Magic Johnson had to play center. It oh. was that was probably. game seven, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's against the Sixers. No Celtics. No, that was the Celtics. Celtics. Huh? Yeah, because because no, Bird, Magic, Magic played. played, played no, it was no, it no, was no. Magic's rookie year. Then Magic's they played back to back. Year. Him and Bird played in the NCAA, and then they played yep. in the championship the next yep. year. Magic so, beat the Sixers in the finals they did. that year. Oh, well, they got twenty Magic championships. They beat center. the Sixers. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't Let's it see. wasn't the Celtics. No, and that was, was one of the genesis of the Sixers going out and getting Moses Malone and then sweeping the Lakers' ass <laughs> in 82 yeah. 83. Four nothing. Mo Cheeks with a dunk to finish it off at the forum. Is he right? Did yeah, you look he, that up? A- Aaron's right on I mean, that. Aaron's, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron's tell right. Tell me I, about my Sixers. Yeah, man. man he's, uh, he's right on that. Wait, it's, was, it's, I, was I right about the air conditioning going out, though? You were right oh, about the, Boston, the, always, the air conditioning going out in Boston. Right. Yes, yes. Magic playing center uh, as a rookie was against the Sixers, though. Yeah, so, so you both are right, varying degrees of right. I'm guessing that won't be your re-air, Aaron, that you'd be watching. <laughs> well, mine might be game four against the <laughs> Lakers. Mo Cheeks, Andrew Tony, Dr. J, Moses Malone, Mark Ivoroni swept the Lakers. That's my, Dr. J's re-air. layup under the basket? Under no, the that's, basket. That's, oh. that's, in, that's in the previous. That's in the one they lost. Okay. They lost that series. You um, are a Philadelphia fan. <laughs> no, but mine is uh, SC Oklahoma. Oh, I, and I watched oh, it last yeah. week. I, I watched it last week, and I was I was actually taking screenshots of it and and texting Reggie Willits, who's who's a big Oklahoma guy. So <laughs> that, that was that was mine. That's Thunder phenomenal. and lightning, Lendell uh, White and Reggie Lindell Bush. White and Reggie oh Bush. yeah, boys, man. That, oh, man. they. Phew. That, they I thought you so went all good. the way back to Jamel Holloway. 
running the wishbone. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that, Taking us way back, legit. Art. Yeah, uh, both all of you guys have not even born yet, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. So, Hark, get all right. You everybody wants to know what do you watch now? What do you watch? Give the audience what are like what's a, a top five must watch list during quarantine right now? Oh, Narcos. CC hooked me up with that. One. Narcos okay. is good. Narcos. Okay. Um, I never seen Narcos. So I can do that. I just started Ozark yesterday. Okay. Love the first four okay. episodes. And then after that, I go right to my, my TV shows with I got the Blacklist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The Blacklist. I, I don't care what anybody says. Chicago PD. Hey, <laughs> Hart, you know I love that man because two of my friends are actors on that show. Yep. All right, we already had this conversation. Mm-hmm. Chicago PD. Yep. And then then I'm I'm hooked on the Good Doctor. Well, the autistic doctor. It's almost oh, like a Doogie yeah. Howser. Oh, yeah. Okay. Really, really good. Season finale was last night, and he got the girl, so it was good. Oh, nice man. Spoiler alert. That's on ABC, right? Shows, man. Huh? That's ABC, right? That's ABC. Because that yeah. followed The Bachelor this spring. Oh, yeah. That's the, other, <laughs> that's the other thing I'm a little worried about. Him and Nevin date nights on Mondays during spring training. <laughs> Watching The Bachelor? Watching The Bachelor. <laughs> it's good TV, man. Oh, that's terrible, man. Wait, now they got like so, some singing show about The Bachelor coming wait, on, too, right? So how about this? That? So we take our trip. Yes. Very, very stupid overnight trip in spring training that drives me but i don't understand why we do this but two days we go to boca or wherever the heck we go down south and pop the bus pulls up to the hotel and everybody gets <laughs> off the bus except for booney and nevin who are sitting side by side with <laughs> with a glass of wine on the bus waiting for the commercial of the bachelor before they uh. leave <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't a good look. <laughs> <laughs> you got like oh, minor league great. players walking oh, on the bus like, like are you oh, kidding me? <laughs> Yo, Hark, have you seen Tiger King yet? Please tell me you watched that on Netflix. No, man, I've been reading about it. I read the thing where Shaq says, no, that Don't guy read not nothing else about it. Go watch that, please. please That's, you know what? When we look back on this in like 10 or 20 years and hopefully look, that'll be one of the, the images of – the coronavirus is going to oh, be no. Tiger King. You are hundred percent right of the yep. quarantine yes. for sure. Yes. No doubt, no doubt. You have to watch okay. it, Hark. I'm telling okay. you, I, I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> now I will I'm tell so you, hey, right now. you'll hey. definitely you'll need to shave, bathe, do it all after. So <laughs> it, wait till you're ready to get rid of the beard because oh after gosh. about episode five, you need to. Oh. Oh. I almost didn't come back to it. Yeah, I had to convince him to go back to it. He was like, I'm not watching this shit no more. I'm like, yo, you have to finish it. Oh, my gosh. It, it's, oh. It, you know what's funny? Aaron, I was in the same place. When I, when we got done with five, I was like, I'm d- I can't. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this. <laughs> I am in a dark spot here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Turn the lights on. <laughs> it's funny you say that. I actually, I told I told my fiance, I was like, I got to put Harry Potter on before I go to bed. She's like, what do you mean? <laughs> Oh, I was like, no, no, watched, I need to get this I out of my the head. Whole series this weekend. Yes. The whole series this weekend. Oh, Harry Potter? Gosh. Yeah. Oh, it happened to be on TNT, and I sat, I don't know why I sat there through the commercials and everything. Oh, beautiful, Mark. Have you, Hark, I think Hark, have you finished All American? Weekend. No, uh-uh. Nikki just finished it, so I'm uh, I'm up next. I, I prioritize my TV. All See, American all always American? Did you watch it, Booney? Oh, yeah. I'm on oh, like yeah. episode five in, in, season, in, the, in this new season. I'm on episode five. Oh, it's good. It's good, right? Amber's not on board with it, though, so it makes it hard. Like, I got to watch it when she's not around, which is she's never not fucking around right now. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. Watch Laura it. makes fun of me for watching it, too. She's like, Yeah. Why are you watching seriously? the TV Bobber show? No, this shit is good. And it's yeah. a true story. I, I've yeah. heard it's really it's good. Pacing her. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Now that, now that I know kind of some of the interests here for the manager who had hidden some of his show interests in the past, I guess, I have to ask Were you a Love is Blind guy, Aaron? No, so um, actually it was, I think Nevin told me you got to try that one too. So I tried it 15 minutes in, couldn't hold me. I was out. Wow. Yeah, it's the yeah. it's the when they were in the little pod things. I'm like, what the fuck yeah, is was, this? I couldn't, I yeah. couldn't do it. See, I couldn't do it. You, you got to go the Ruko route on that. I, I caught it the last episode of the pods and then I watched the rest of the series. That's the way you do it. Because then it's great. It's really like, it's, 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 it's high quality trash from there forward, but like the pods, 
probably is a little too boring, whatever. Just go to the last episode of the pods and really? then continue. Yeah, I think I you get like, it. I like, I like Nick Lachey and Vanessa, and, and they couldn't even hold me on this one. No, so, yeah, it's true. <laughs> I don't know. It's I, uh, I, Apple TV's got some good shows, too. I just discovered, like, I'm deep in the internet TV right now, like on, on the streaming <laughs> service. And Apple TV's got some good shows, man. I'm I was like really, really surprised. Oh, you guys watch any movies that have come out on that left the theater and are already in there, like The Invisible Man? And yeah, no, I we watched The Invisible Man last weekend, and then we watched Onward this weekend because uh, Amazon Prime has all the the movies that are still in theaters that you can't go see. Oh, okay. How, how about The Crown? I've never done the, the crown. crown. I've heard it's great. I've never watched the crown. So I was got my wife got into that. I was I was watching quite a bit of it with her. We got through two seasons, but then after the second season, they switched the cast because they it they age everyone. So it's Ooh. like a new Queen Elizabeth, new Phil, new whole thing. It was like kinda, you kind of get into the characters a little yeah, bit. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like uh, I don't know, but it, it's yeah. good. Like, go ahead. That's what was so good about the Tudors is like the characters stayed the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Like if you yeah. ever watch that, that, the characters okay. you got into to the characters. Yeah, yeah. That's honestly that's one of the toughest things for me is if you switch an actor or actress on me, I all of a yeah. sudden like I can't. Especially buy if they're it. good. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you the 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 biggest um, or the most egregious infraction on that front that I've ever dealt with men, is men 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 it, menly men men <laughs> well that's a great that's a great one but like no the dark dark night like to me oh, switching yeah. Katie Holmes for Maggie Gyllenhaal is like yeah. one of the most under talked about parts of like people laud that movie over and over again I'm like yeah except for I didn't care at all that Maggie Gyllenhaal was about to get blown up because to me she wasn't she was not the girl. She wasn't Rachel. You know what I mean? Like right. because Katie Holmes was her in Batman Begins. Like it's, I, that it's was important. Yeah, it is. You got to keep your consistency with those characters, man. I got to, Hark. I'm surprised you haven't done Tiger King yet. That's next on the list for you, man. Oh yeah, man, he, well, he puts stuff in order though. Like he won't watch Tiger King for like another two weeks because he's got to watch Chicago <laughs> PD. Then Blacklist comes on on Friday. Like, oh, he's got to like hey, line it up. So I'll give him two weeks. I don't watch. have the kind of comprehensive you know, retaining knowledge that CC has. He can watch 16 <laughs> different shows and know where he left off. I can't do that. If I did that, I would have to go back and watch the very last episode. I told you, I rewatched Harry Potter and I was going, there was shit on there. I was like, wait, I didn't remember that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, and, and it throws me off. So I know I, I, I watch the same program over and over again until I, until I fully get it. Or I, I'd have to have my daughter sitting with me so she can explain everything for me. Part two, right now I'm watching Vikings and Atlanta at the same time on Hulu. Uh, yeah. At the same time. Every other episode I'm switching. You, I mean, yeah. You're probably watching one of them right now as you're recording. Let's be honest. I was watching the Vikings. This is kind of <laughs> fucking up my TV time. Right now, Amber's going to want to come watch something. <laughs> uh, well, hey, let's, let's get to some Twitter questions for you guys because there's some good ones. I like this one from uh, Joey RUA1037. He says, Hark, have you ever called the dugout while someone is warming – and tell them, hey, this guy just doesn't have it today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. You should say that. But yeah, there's probably been two or three times when I've when I've uh, I've called Larry just to kind of give Booney or Joe a heads up that I say um, just. Just FYI, uh, he's not throwing very many strikes. <laughs> but it's really weird because we had a guy oh, a, a long time ago. And see, you might remember him. What was the big, the big tall pitcher we had? Dave Matnut, uh, that he got, he played a basketball at Maryland and w went with us to uh, Virginia. Brackman? Uh, Andrew Brackman? Brackman. Yeah. Brackman, Brackman. So right. Brackman makes his major league debut in Toronto and he proceeds to throw about three balls into the stands behind the bullpen. <laughs> oh and <laughs> I had to call a boy. I had to call the dugout and say, hey, uh, Joe, uh, he is a little bit nervous. <laughs> 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 and I don't even remember if he got through it, but then it, then it was also Dylan's first outing, which was a start in Tampa. And he threw probably he threw twenty five pitches and probably threw eight strikes. 
<laughs> so. You know, D's got to be the worst warming up because I play catch with. I used to play catch with Dylan in the offseason. And I know it. I'm like, how the fuck does he throw strikes? Like, <laughs> oh my everywhere. Gosh. You jump for two, then it's down here, then it's over here. Like, oh, it's, that's man. insane, man. That's easily, insane. easily. When he was younger, the hardest repeatable mechanic ever in the history of mechanics, ever. <laughs> but he, he figured it out and became a five time all star. So man. I think he did it right. Yeah, he did. I could see you, Aaron, like, he, he, you know the crowd's thinking like, why isn't he going to this guy? Why is it you just want to turn? Around? <laughs> hey, trust me, we don't want this guy in there today. <laughs> I've had to pull out the trust me line quite a few times. But oh, sometimes you just, you just got to roll with it, and sometimes it works out. And Park will come in after and goes, he did not throw one strike down in the bullpen. Oh yeah, he was so skipping the, the, fastballs. Yeah, but the, the funny the funny one is sometimes when Booney has Larry call and Larry will. Pick up the phone and he'll say, "Hey, get so and so up." And I go, "Who?" But I heard who he said. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure he was saying the right name. <laughs> That's great. That's oh. phenomenal. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I'm glad like I got to spend like my last couple weeks of my career down in the bullpen with Hart. Like that was that was fun for me. You know what I'm saying? Like that was cool. Oh. Hey, if the you best one ever was Tarpley. Yeah, oh, yeah. Tarpley. Tarpley. When he brought Tarp, when Booney brought Tarpley in for the save in Cleveland. Oh yeah. <laughs> he says, "Hey, Tar- Tarpley's got the 11. I said, "Who?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, he got that save too. He did. He got yes, it. he did. Yes, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, tell him what he said. See, <laughs> I can't remember, but I like. He I said, can't "That's what I'm word talking word. about." Yeah, That's what I'm talking yeah. about. I'm, he said, "I'm back." Yeah, I'm back. That's what I'm talking about. That is definitely not what we were talking about. Because it was bases Uh, loaded, nobody out, right? And he got out of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And then then, then got the last three outs after we took the lead. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, my gosh. That's a good one. All right. This question comes from uh, Kevin, uh, walkoff9 on Twitter. He says, Aaron, who has a better throwing arm, you or Amy Cole? (laughs) <laughs> Amy He's definitely right <laughs> actually it's coming out pretty good right now for me I'm alright oh, really? for old man nice yeah. well, arms in shape uh, along those lines uh, Chloe Donna uh, asks how much time have you spent with the Coles this quarantine season <laughs> <laughs> not a lot I just roll over and occasional uh, play a little catch in the front yard that's it we keep our social distance and um and then the one day where i recorded them playing catch so she was impressive man pregnant and yeah footwork the whole bit man she was she was pretty impressive but i've only been over there a couple times just to just to play catch and and keeping our distance i think i sadie told us last time too amy was a softball stud too right yeah ucla yeah ucla she plays softball yeah Yeah. um this one's for you hark from uh Joel Tomei, uh, J.R. Tomei uh, 10 on Twitter, says, from the players you've seen in the bullpen, which are the pitchers who had the nastiest fastball, slider, curve, changeup, sinker? I don't know if you can think of all five, but maybe pick one or two, you know, or three of the nastiest pitches you've seen in the pen from guys. Like well, nasty, nastiest fastball would have to be Chappie. Mm-hmm. Um, nastiest slider. Probably would have to be Dylan, the Tansas. Um, nastiest change up. Ooh, that's probably Tommy Canley. <clears throat> um, what other pitch did he say? Uh, sl- he says slider, uh, s- a sinker, mm-hmm. sinker. Yeah. Well, we know who that is. Nasty. What sinker? Yeah, Brit. sinker. That's that's probably Britain. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Mo had a nasty sinker. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was it was absolutely amazing how. After I think it was 2011, he said, uh, "He said King Kong, I'm just going to start throwing sinkers to get these guys off of my cutter away." And he started throwing sinkers, and it was incredible. He just mastered it in like three days, and he, and he started using it. So at the end of his career, he was throwing a sinker in addition to the cutter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that is that's a uh, it's interesting, man. And it, it was it, it was a one one sinker. He can make his cutter a slider too. Like he can make a big, and then he threw a small one. Like 
I was always trying to figure that out like the last four years where I could like throw a big bigger one and a smaller <sighs> one, but he like it was unbelievable what he could do with with the baseball. Like if you oh. showed him something, it was crazy. Yeah, and along those lines, so <laughs> speaking of watching old games, I was watching one of these old games where Mo was throwing his cutter. I'm sitting there with Bella, my 10-year-old, and I'm like, can you see his ball cutting? She's like, no. And then she finally saw one really, Mom. I'm like, it's going to start on that side and it's going to move a little. She goes, yeah, I saw it finally. <laughs> it's crazy. I can remember the first time I ever saw Mo pitch live. I was there with my dad, and my dad's like, watch how easy his motion is. And how the ball yeah. just then boom explodes out of his hand, and that always like that always blew me away. Then watching him through the years, how it was just like this like athletically graceful, effortless motion, right? And then all of a sudden, poof, the ball just would jump out of his hand. It's crazy. Yeah, I, you know what's stood out to me <clears throat> over these years, and 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 C had this quality too. Is like, <clears throat> and it's a little taboo for a position player to say it, but like how good an athletes pitchers are and how the really great ones, usually what separates them a lot is their athleticism because that ultimately allows them to repeat their delivery. Mm. And Mo was, you know, <laughs> it's like literally like just having a nice, easy catch out in the backyard. Yeah. Crazy. Athlete. To be able to do less and have more is the key yeah. to being a good pitcher. You know, you look at all these guys that are max effort, you don't see very many max effort guys last very long. And you, and, and you, and you, you look at Chappie and you think he's max effort, but Chappie has the ability to throttle back when he knows he's having a hard time repeating his delivery. And he does it all the time. Um, he's a guy who, I mean, the way he ages, it's like he's aging backwards. Him and, and most, most seem like he did the same thing. He aged backwards. Like it looked like it was uh, Benjamin Button. It was crazy. But like, <laughs> You, you you got Mo. It, I think he could have pitched another two to five years if Amazing. he wanted to, easily. And for a guy that they say like players always wish that they can retire at their peak, I mean, it was almost like he retired before he hit his peak, you know. And he still yeah. had over six hundred hundred saves. Mm. That's the thing about like Andy too. Andy could have pitched another two or three years. He was just like his legs <clears throat> and stuff. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he broke his leg that one year. Like I hit with the line drive, but like. He could have easily kept pitching. Yeah. You know what I'm oh, saying? Like the way yeah. he could repeat his delivery and how he knew how to pitch. Like he could have easily been pitching. The same yeah. like Chappie. Chappie's everybody looks at Chappie how big he is, but like you gotta look how flexible he is. Like yes. he's yes. so strong in his range. And and that's yes. like yes. the biggest thing for a pitcher is having all that range and then being that big. Like that's yes. like there he's never not gonna throw a hundred. Right. <laughs> he's, he, well, and he's a, uni he's a unicorn because his throw and his, the mechanics, if you really break down his throw, is so oh, yeah. good that it'll allow him to hopefully stay healthy. But evolve, even as he quote unquote gets a little less stuff, I think I think Chappie ends up aging really, really well. Plus, he works his ass off. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good quality. All right, we have one more Twitter question here, Aaron. This was a cool one, I thought. Uh, from um, B Green four eight four JB, he says after hitting your walk off in the O three ALCS, who was the coolest person to reach out and congratulate you? Um, I'll say that the next morning. Well, we I mean the game ended after midnight, and by the time we got home, it was who knows yeah four in the morning, and and I got a phone call from uh, Joe Torrey at like seven, eight in the morning. And the World Series is now tomorrow, by the way. And he's like, hey, I need you to come down to City Hall. All right, so <clears throat> to meet Bloomberg and do some kind of whatever. So as I'm walking out of the hotel that I'm staying at, there's paparazzi <laughs> taking pictures. <laughs> I get in the car and, and go meet Bloomberg and and do the whole City Hall thing. So that, that is was my my first thought when you when you said that. That's you awesome. You in a hotel that whole year or that, that year yeah. you came over? Yeah. Wow. We lived in the city in the hotel, just me and Laura. Man, that's crazy. That's pretty cool, mm -hmm. though, man. You get to call in the morning and then, like, you know, it's like, hey, you got to go motivate to meet the mayor. Yeah, the call at the time wasn't too cool because <laughs> I really just want to sleep, man. <laughs> uh, I bet, man. Well, uh, fellas, this was – I mean, this was awesome. This was absolutely fantastic. I – um. I think our, our audience will appreciate, obviously, the perspective 
as far as, you know, how you guys are handling the way COVID-19 is affecting preparation um, and your relationships and maintaining them with the players throughout. But even more importantly, the the distraction of some fun stories and uh, and good yeah. television advice as well. Um, but no thank, thank you guys for doing this. Actually. Yeah, thank you. Thanks yeah, for having thanks me. Well. And that was fun. It's, uh, it's fun. And you guys uh, be well. Thank you, man. Stay safe, guys, and stay six and feet I, apart. And I like, I like the, I like the hair or the lack. Of Thank hair. you, my man. That's yeah, see, on. Aaron. Grow that shit back out, cuz. No way, man. No way. <laughs> nah, this good. is it. You got a good bald head, man. You're good, Thank, thank you. Oh, thank you. Man, Moody you can tell you anything, good. bro. He's a hey. motivator, cuz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking it to the bank. They believe everything yeah. he says. I'm, ta- yeah. I'm taking it to the bank, man. <laughs> until yeah. we get, until we get off this cuz. He will text all the coaches and go, man. <laughs> I don't buy it. I think he's in on it. I think he's in on it. I'm forwarding a text. I'm forwarding a text.